So I have a, a pretty custom shape here. I'm actually going to use the rounded rectangle that I copied over and sized because it matches the angle. And instead of following my sketch, which really scoops it in, I think for my design, it might be an improvement if it is a little bit stronger and angled that way instead of introducing this, this big sweeping curve. And I can always change it later. But notice that even though this is going to be a complex shape, I've tried to reduce the anchor points a lot. Now I need to uh, add some more and get this circle in there. And the easiest way to do that is to cut a circle shape away from it. Now there are tools for this. I have it at 34% opacity. I'll bring it up to 50. And the shape that a lot of you will be tempted to use is the eraser. And the eraser, you can double click. If you double click on the eraser tool, the paint, the blob brush tool, the pencil tool, you'll get to these settings. And I can change its size. And I can just cut away from my selected shape. But it won't be the perfect circle that I'm looking for to give me that even spacing around my around my circle hinge there. So if I show it at 100%, I'll show you what that looks like. And it gives me what I want, but it, it's not as controlled. So let me undo that. And instead of using the eraser, I'm going to make a circle. I'm going to use Pathfinder again. I'm going to hold down shift so it's a perfect circle. I'm going to turn the transparency on that so I can really see and position it directly over this circle underneath. Use my arrow keys. So I get a nice even cutout around it. Shift and option. Okay, then I'm going to turn it to 100%. I don't need to turn it to white, but I'm going to just for clarity's sake. Okay, because that's what I'm trying to cut away. That's going to be on top of this shape underneath. Now, before I use Pathfinder to, to make a compound, and cut one shape out of the other, I need to bring them up to 100% opacity. Otherwise, that lower opacity will get locked into it. And so it will be that 50%, even though it thinks it's 100%. Now, this isn't a perfect solution in terms of its cutout, right? But it's going to give me the shapes I need to modify. So how do I do that? I select the white circle. I hold down Shift. I select the shape it's overlapping, you see those two paths. And then I'm going to use the Pathfinder and use the minus to cut one away from the other, cut the one on top away from the other. I'll turn off the sketch, see how that looks. Yeah, so far, so good. And now, just like I have been doing, I'm going to control the anchor points. Now this one is kind of the trickiest one. I want it to flatten out there. So what I do is I click off, I hover over this anchor point, I hold down shift so the angle doesn't change, and I squeeze it in like that. Then I zoom in, and I can delete the anchor that are no longer needed. Ah, but that changed the curve. Tricky. So what I need to do is click on this anchor, isolated. Ah, that is tough. Let's see. So I don't want to change that circle. What options do I have? This is the kind of the quirks and problem solvings that come in. Ah, oh, let's see, because I need this anchor point to get that curve. And what 
is this coming? I just shifted down, that curve's going to be strange. That's no, not, not too bad. I can just adjust it slightly. I can live with that. And then I'll get rid of this extra anchor point. Okay, good. Now, We've used the convert anchor point tool, which Illustrator just calls the anchor point tool. The shortcut for it is shift C, if that's helpful to you. We've used that to turn rounded anchor points into curves or into straights. But now what I want to do is turn straight anchor points like this one, and especially this one, into curves. So I'm going to go to the Convert Anchor Point tool. I'm going to click on this straight, and then I'm going to pull on each side. Just click and drag, and it will turn it into a curve that I can use. Same with this. Click and drag. It'll turn it into curves. Now, sometimes that's what you want. Sometimes you just want to round the corner. And that's where you use these other options, selecting that individual anchor point. You can also use the small selection tool to individually adjust the handles. If I want it to be a little bit less of a curve on one side or the other. I can adjust them. I might round this corner a little bit. And I might round this corner a little bit. as well as this one. Okay. So by keeping it to kind of minimal anchor points, you really can have full control. Now here's a tricky area here. I want this to round closer to the circle. So I'm going to select that individual anchor point, hold down shift so it keeps the angle. Push it to where I want it. And honestly, I think the easiest way is to just make a duplicate, Command C, Command V, of this, and then cut it out. I'm going to cut this shape, which I can turn white just so for clarity's sake, using Pathfinder again. Cut that edge out from this edge. Hold down Shift, select them, overlap them, use minus. I didn't line it up quite right. So let me use transparency to line it up. So in Illustrator, it really matters to kind of understand what happened, <laughs> why you're, how you're doing what you're doing, and why that matters. So not only am I going to line it up, I'm going to enlarge it so it feels like it's outside of that existing circle and even, like that. And then I can cut, I, I want to take it to 100% opacity because sometimes the opacity can get locked in. Then click on the two overlapping, 
and then minus one from the other, and it will cut out that curve for me. Sometimes giving me a lot of anchor points that I can then adjust. There we go. And just round this one out a little bit. Uh, but no dice there because there's a lot of a lot of anchor points that were made from that cutout. So I'm going to delete the one at the very end, and then I'm going to play with the curves like so. Do I want that even more rounded? Yeah. Lock its angle, but I'm going to round it off a little bit more. Remember, holding down shift will lock its angle. That's things stay parallel. Nice. Okay, now more organic shapes. This is such a complicated shape that trying to match its angle with anything that already exists doesn't really seem to make sense. So this is where I'm going to introduce my favorite tool. It's called the pencil tool. Sometimes you'll find it under the brush. Sometimes it will be separate. You can always find your tools in these three little dots underneath your toolbar, and you can drag them in. So the pencil tool is basically a free-form drawing path tool. If you double-click on it, this is what I like so much about it, you can set it to be super smooth or super accurate or some level in between. I'm going to use the one right in the middle. And then I'm just going to click and draw. And I'm just using my trackpad. And this is a really good use of your tablet with the pencil tool. I'm going to make a pretty funky shape as something to work with. So this is how you can make custom shapes with a lot of anchor points. And then I'm going to fill it with black. And you can see how it's not super refined. It's like cutting it out of black paper. But what I love about the pencil tool is that it's like magic scissors. So I just cut this out of black, but I can also, with the pencil tool, as long as I start on the path and end on the path, I can grow as well as take away. And I can correct it as I go. Now, the problem is it gives you quite a few anchor points. And so it's not as easy to use the pen tool to, to modify it. But you can always delete anchor points and convert them and do all that jazz to simplify it. But it gives you really great control of your shapes. As long as you get good at starting on the path and ending on the path. This is something I use a lot for, for digital inking of illustrations, like doing the, the vector line art around a t-shirt design, for instance. For logos, it can sometimes be a little too clunky. But when shapes are just really awkward, you can't get them with the shape tool, and it just takes too long to build them with the pen tool. That's what the pencil tool is there for. And because I do more illustrations in Illustrator, 